In this lesson, we're going to be taking a brief look at how the basics of UVs work. I know it's a simple thing to be covering, but I think it helps to review this, and it will serve as a solid foundation for us to build on. The main reason for UVs is to provide a way to get a location on a mesh, and based on its UV value, sample or look up a texture. I like to use the term look up because it brings to mind what's happening when we have a 2D UV value and how it returns the value of the texture when we travel along the U axis by the amount specified by the U coordinate and then travel up by the amount specified by the V coordinate. It's like looking up something in a dictionary. I'll use the terms look up and sample interchangeably, so when I use those terms, you can assume they mean the same thing. When a GPU renders a triangle to the screen, it does so by rasterizing the pixels in between the three vertices that define that triangle. Rasterizing is the action of rendering the pixels between the vertices by filling in the pixels. The color of those pixels is something we want to be determined by a texture, and UVs are what map the triangles to the location of the texture that we want to cover that triangle. But the UV values are stored on the vertices, so how does the rasterizer know how to sample the right pixel from the texture in the middle of a triangle? The reason this is possible is because the renderer interpolates the UVs across the surface of the face. This is like blending the three UV values based on the distance from the vertices. Once the interpolated UV value is found, it is used to sample the texture and give that pixel a color. The data type of UVs are called a vector. This is simply just two floating point values that are bundled together into one data type. We don't have to refer to the individual components as U or V, as technically they are just individual float values. They can even be visualized on screen as red and green colors, which helps us to see what we're doing to them. But it's enough to know that the first component of the vector corresponds to the horizontal sampling location of the texture, and the second component corresponds to the vertical location. The range of UVs is usually considered to go from 0 to 1 in both the horizontal and vertical directions, with 0 being the left or top, and 1 being the right or bottom. We'll cover later on in the course what happens when you go above 1 or below 0, as there are some side effects, but then we'll find that you can use that creatively for designing effects. You might be asking why the 0, 0 value here is in the upper left. Well, that's a peculiarity that is a result of different graphics programming APIs or application programming interfaces having their own definition of where the origin is. DirectX defines the origin to be in the upper left corner and OpenGL defines it to be in the lower left. In Unreal, we're dealing with the former where the origin is in the upper left. So all the material in this course will assume that is the case. So in the simple case, we have seen that when rendering a mesh, the texture will be sampled using the UVs that are stored on the mesh. They are interpolated across the face. The blended UV value is used to sample the texture, and that is used in your shader to color the pixel. The interesting thing is that we can hijack that UV value and manipulate it before the texture is sampled. Now let's go on and see the various ways we can do that. 